All right, so we're back here in the shop. Uh, been getting stuff together, uh, you know, getting spinner baits ready and getting geared up for the year. But I've got a little, little something, something I wanted to show you. It is a deep diving BFS crankbait. That's right. Um, it's been out for just a little bit, but it's kind of a low key secret. And I was just going to let you guys in on this. And this is the uh, the Spro micro little john uh 45 is so it's little i mean you can see it in my hand it's it's very small but it gets deep so either you can throw it on a spinning rod or you can throw it on a bfs setup like this you can throw it on a regular uh like shallow running crankbait rod but it's probably not um optimal like you can you can still cast it a pretty good distance put it on a bfs system get it on out there uh, and still have all the control and everything that you want with a, uh, a regular you know bait caster this is the uh, the Dawa Tatula 70 I really like that I mean you for the money you cannot beat it that's the little uh the little guy there man people trying to call me while I'm doing videos I'll call him back later uh but this and this the little uh the cash and icon VFS there's a bunch of rods and reels out there nowadays and this a lot of the bfs guys are using a braid to a leader and i like to have a little bit longer leader you can see my leader goes all the way into the spool i have an eight pound sunline sniper leader and then i've got the um, 12 pound um, sunline braid on there and uh, that's the d braid they don't make the d braid anymore but uh, i haven't switched it out just yet because it still still works good um, but that combo right there you can zip it way out there you can make really long casts um, the bfs thing has really gotten popular a lot of guys fishing ned rig shaky heads and all kind of stuff like that but for those of you fishing treble hook baits smaller crank baits that little setup right there is really really good in the pre-spawn or when you want to get a smaller sized crank bait deeper than other people are fishing like so you you're going to be going down the bank in cer certain lakes to where a lot of guys are throwing let's say little small shad wraps uh risto wraps maybe just the regular little john getting four five six feet deep uh maybe just throwing you know regular square bills getting three and four feet deep at the most uh you come behind them with you know this deeper deeper style of of crankbait just to give you another up close look at it that puppy right there that's cellmate one of my favorite shad colors of all times deep shallow doesn't matter uh but that that right there is um it's what i'd be looking for pre-spawn is, is a really good time to throw, throw this especially when those fish are starting to move up sometimes they can be aggressive on certain days but then other days you might get more of a bluebird sky or you just have a lot of boat pressure you need to downsize a little bit. Uh, maybe the water cleared up from what it was. Maybe it was a little bit dirty. Maybe it, it cleared up a little bit. And so those fish are gonna back off the bank a little bit, get a little bit deeper. I can tell you, um, it was probably a, two years ago, we were at uh, having a pre-spawn type, spawn pre-spawn type tournament at Pickwick Lake. And I had this bad boy on and it saved my butt on day two. Uh, day one, I put together a decent li limit. I had like some weird boat problems, uh, motor issues. Some stuff came loose. It was just kind of a weird thing. Uh, once they put it back together, I got back out there and, and ended up having a pretty good bag that day. So day two, I go to show up and man, the fish were getting real tricky. And I couldn't I couldn't get bit on the regular crankbait that I was throwing, the normal size crankbait that I was throwing on day one. Day two, I look around, I see an angler catch one on a shaky head and I threw a shaky head a little bit, nothing. I said, man, if, if they're biting a shaky head, they're gonna be on something that's a little bit more finesse because we didn't have any wind that second day. And I put on, I, I don't actually remember which color it was. I think it might have been chartreuse, black chartreuse. It was a brighter color. I think it may have been, um, no, I know exactly. I know it was spring crawl. I know it was. Oh, this one's still got damn line tied to it. It might've been the one I was throwing. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see very small stuff right now. But I think it was that spring crawl color it was I was throwing because the water was kind of dirty. 
and I was fishing a little point and some rocks and some riprap. I was fishing this like this big area, and I, once I switched over to that that puppy right there, I started catching fish, and it put me together a decent limit, and I made ten thousand dollars because I made day three at the Bassmaster Elite Series on Pickwick Lake. Uh, so that's just that's one instance where it saved me right there. Uh, but man, anytime you want to get that kind of a crankbait down a little bit deeper, um, all the same crankbait principles apply here. So you're going to be able to, you know, hit those same angles to where you're going to parallel the bank if you're fishing, say, riprap or something like that. And if you're fishing a point, you're going to want to you're going to want to make multiple different angles. So if you got a point that's that's set up like like this right here, you know, comes out like that, you're going to want to sit out here and throw kind of across each angle. Then maybe you go across it and throw it a couple times, throw up shallow. And then don't forget, you can also come up shallow and throw out and, and drag it up, uh, giving them the fish a different look. I can't tell you the number of times you just keep moving angles around a point or where you think some fish were. You just keep moving angles and all of a sudden, bam, you trigger that one fish that you really need. Or maybe it's the bigger fish or it you know, could be that fifth fish that you need in a tournament. Um, but just to kind of go back into colors, anytime I'm fishing pre-spawn and I'm going to be around light stain, I really like green pumpkin crawl. That's one of my favorite crankbait colors uh, in a bunch of different baits. Just love that orange on the belly. It's it just got that green pumpkin-y color on the sides. Really like that when the water's a little bit clearer. Now when the water gets a little bit of stain in it in that pre-spawn period. The reds come to life. I showed you the spring crawl. We got this bad boy right here. It's western crawl. Western crawl is one of my absolute faves. Love that in the regular little John as well. Uh, but then for you guys down there in Texas, get that. You know what that is. You know what that is right there. I'm gonna have this on at Toledo Bend. I promise you when we get down there. And then you gotta have some shad colors all time probably my favorite natural shad color is homemade shad it's got that flash on the sides there's something about that flash on the sides that just just tears them up um and then obviously i showed you the the cellmate that's probably my favorite regular color in the uh in this type of crankbait so it's a the bait is a really good complement to the shad wrap you guys like the shad wrap uh, this is the number seven shad wrap right there. I think this is tried and true. It's caught a gazillion bass, a gazillion seven. The last time I think I counted. And that bad boy right there will absolutely catch them. No, that's a five. Here's a seven over here. Five and a seven. This only runs about mm, four to five feet deep. The seven maybe get, maybe get six feet deep um, on a good cast. But there's like throwing a Pringles out there. It's like though, as a boy say, old boys used to say, like throwing a tater chip. So it's like throwing a tater chip. The micro is not like throwing a tater chip, and it will get you know in every bit of that ten foot deep. I've actually hung it in twelve feet of water. Uh, I don't think that's a normal cast. I think ten or eleven feet, you're going to be able to scratch bottom, hit cover, eight nine feet, no problem. You can make that long cast. Uh, because it's got so much leverage on the front of that bill, you can't super burn it. Uh, you can you can reel it. I I throw it out there, let it get to the you know out there far as you can, and then I'm gonna just start cranking it at a kind of like a slow moderate pace. Let that bait start to transcend and get down, you know, on a normal track. And once it kind of gets to the bottom, then I can kind of do some fun stuff with it. I can speed it up a little bit. I can stop it. Uh, the bait has a real slow float. So once that bait hits the bottom, or if you think it's getting close to the bottom, you just want to do something erratic, you can stop it and kind of give it a little jerk, and it'll kind of hit the bottom and kind of just sit there, and then slowly float away from them. Uh, that's when I catch a lot of fish on that thing. That, that's what exactly what I was doing at Pickwick. I was reeling it down there. I would tick the bottom, and then I would just kind of pause it. And when I would pause it, it would hit it. It was almost like a worm bite. Uh, it was really, really cool. Love that pre-spawn bite. So there's the uh, the micro, little John micro, DD. Um, it's a slick little bait. I'm telling you, good compliment to the shad wrap. Add it to your arsenal. Get you BFS guys. If you're not throwing it, shame on you. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. 
Uh, if you guys have any other good BFS baits, I would like to know. Personally, I would like to know. Maybe we'll do some videos on that. But as always, thank you guys for watching.